Benjamin Newman is a professor and chair of biological sciences at Texas A&M University. Benjamin, good to have you with us. Um, so the technology used to produce uh, the Oxford University vaccine seems to be very different from the, the Pfizer and the Moderna one. This one looks as though it's going to be a lot easier to transport around the world because you don't have to keep it at such low temperatures. Yes, and this is a very positive thing. Um, the Oxford vaccine is actually made from the hollowed out shell of another virus. So it's not a live virus. It's not uh, dangerous in any particular way. But uh, it's just a little lump of protein with a bit of double-stranded DNA inside, which to the average person doesn't necessarily mean much, but it's a very stable way that we can transport these things. Uh, and so uh, that shows. The other two leading candidates right now are messenger RNA type vaccines. And this is something which breaks down rather quickly in laboratory settings. It's something we have to be very careful when we're using or else it just sort of disappears. So it's good to have some of these options because a solution is going to need to be rolled out to the entire world, including places where uh, refrigeration at very low temperatures is not possible. Right. And one of the concerns about the speed with which vaccines are, are being um, uh, developed are safety concerns. Now, in all three cases so far, uh, the uh, developers have said, we have not seen any safety issues at all. But can I ask you, what about long-term effects? Because we haven't had time to suss those out. This is true, but what we're seeing so far is that there don't seem to be uh, any real indications that there will be extremely long-term effects of these vaccinations. So the effects that we want are sort of an increase in the number of antibodies and uh, white blood cells that can respond to the virus. But even those effects seem to go down relatively quickly after. So this is probably a vaccine that is going to essentially disappear um, from your immune system. Uh, within about six months or maybe a year at the uh, outside. I think the other thing to point out here is the differences between some of the vaccines and how effective they are right now. We're still early enough in each of the studies that the difference between a 68% effective rate and a 94% or a 92% is really just one or two people in a study that could really swing either way. So I think the positive that I would take away from this is that we have several options that seem to work at at least a reasonable level and that we need more data on all of these just to see how well it works. But in terms of the safety, I don't see any major concerns there. This is technology that's been tried in a lot of other ways, and it's fundamentally much safer than vaccines that would use a live virus, which may then mutate back to something else or cause other problems with the immune system. Uh, very safe technology, and uh, it's very nice to see such modern vaccine methods being used. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible what has been developed in such a short space of time when normally this kind of thing takes years. Um, just one other question on, on how this works. You were obviously talking about uh, the vaccine um, stimulates your immune system. What about people who've got compromised immunity? Are they going to be able to get protection from uh, COVID-19? They may get more protection from herd immunity than from direct immunization. But if you have some trace of an immune system, there is at least a chance that these vaccines are going to work. Now, we're still waiting to see how these vaccines work in different populations. Um, the AstraZeneca vaccine, for example, looks as though it may be a little bit on the safer side, lower side effects. And so it might be one that we would like to see um, tried out in older people and younger children. It's probably going to be very safe, but may give a little less of an immune response overall. Um, but there are other options uh, that are available out there. And I think ultimately having a combination of these things where you would maybe get one vaccine in the spring and another in the fall would probably be the best way to protect the most people once the vaccines are available. Benjamin, thank you very much indeed for that. Benjamin Newman there in Texas.